What's happening guys? Mike Andrula, Dynamic Intensity. You're tuning in because we have the best, the most elite content you've never seen before. Maybe you've seen it, but just not as cool. We're gonna be doing a basic combination and we're listening to Jesse's Girl because I think it's a good inspirational song and we're doing it in the middle of our classes, improv style. So we're gonna do what they're doing actually. We're gonna do a left lead front kick. Jesse's Girl, right? This is the Jesse Girl combination. Left foot forward, right front kick. Jab cross, right leg roundhouse. You gotta be quiet for the Jesse's Girl. Right front kick. Drop it down, jab cross, roundhouse. It's chaotic here, guys. We're bringing you this never ending entertainment. So we got a left front kick. Shoot it into your chest. Step, jab, strike with the lead knuckles. It's okay. Cross, twist, push off your back foot. Right leg roundhouse. Remember to get the DVD on the technique. Rear leg front kick. Jab cross. Roundhouse. Left front kick. Jab, back to your chin, cross, twist, push, explode off the ball or foot. Right leg roundhouse. Stay nice and loose in between. Right front kick, move around. Jab cross. Left front kick. Jab cross. Right leg roundhouse. And there you have it, that's the Jesse's Girl combination. Left front kick, jab cross, roundhouse, switch up sides. We're here, we're creative. We love you, keep subscribing. Mike at Club KO Gyms, let's rock it out. What's happening guys, Mike Andrula. Just having a little fun with you, don't get startled just yet. We're gonna break down elbows. And this is just one way to throw an elbow. I, there's a million variations on all the strikes. None are really wrong, some are. Mostly you just wanna be creative. Use your attributes, I'm short and stocky and a guido, so I'm kind of limited in what I'm gonna do. But for elbows, I'm built kind of perfectly. For the elbows, again, you wanna go to our torso twist video where we Elvis the hips, as I like to say, we snap the hips. That's the same technique we're gonna use on our hooks, roundhouses, and elbows here. So your hook and your elbow are closely related. Instead of throwing the hook, you're gonna tuck the thumb, rotate the wrist, and strike with the bone right on the elbow. We got class going on, it's, it's chaos out here, guys. We bring it to you, live action, live action. So we get elbows, you're gonna twist, push, snap the hips, right back. Step, snap it, right back. So you're popping the hip, and then a second later, the elbow is falling. So the snap of the hip, the torque created, twist in the hips, pivot the feet, and as you notice, the hip goes forward. We don't have slow motion technology here, guys. So I'm gonna show, I'm gonna break it down. Slow motion. You break it down like this. Hips go forward. Boom. Back. Fast motion. Pop it right back. Snap back. You don't wanna bludgeon the bag. You wanna finesse it. Pop, and then drive. Boom, bone right there. Other hands up to protect. Lead elbow, same thing. It's just that pop in the hip. Make sure you tune in. Take Holly's class, she's tearing it up right now. Email me, Mike at Club KO Gyms. Let's keep this rocking. Let's keep it rocking, subscribe. Stop fooling around. Oh, sorry guys. Mike Andrula for Dynamic Intensity, and I'm here to show you a getup. And I came back from Tamarindo, Costa Rica, and I picked up a little bit of moves from the surfers, and we're gonna try to incorporate it into your kickboxing, MMA, at-home workouts, whatever you'd like. So we're gonna start out just like a squat thrust and a jumper or a sprawl where you're exploding down. And start out laying down, it's a little bit different. So we're laying down here, arms are straight out, feet are straight out, and this is what's interesting because I do not hit the lower back nearly as much as the surfers do. They try to get their full chest and quads off the ground. But that's just not difficult enough, so we're gonna add a squat thrust and a jumper into it. We're gonna call it a get up. So what we wanna do is basically two hyper extensions. Lift your chest and your quads off the ground. One, two. You're gonna sweep the arms back, explode up, 
right at the position. Right back down. So this is your standard get up. One, two, hands slide back and throw yourself in a position. Now, for the variations, you're gonna kick the right foot forward and then we're gonna kick the left foot forward. So pretend you're on a surfboard, run along, hyperextension, hyperextension. Slide the hands back. There, you were catching a wave in Hoboken, New Jersey. It's amazing. Kick the feet back out. Ready? Squeeze the back. Chest is off the ground, quads are off the ground. Chest off the ground, quads off the ground. Slide the hands back, explode your body. Left foot's coming forward and sit back into it. And you kind of want to land in a good position. You don't want to lean over because you would fall into the wave. You want to get your butt down nice and low. One more time. So if you want to make a series out of it, you do hyperextension, hyperextension, right foot forward, kick it back. Hyperextension, hyperextension, both feet forward. Hyperextension, hyperextension, boom, left foot forward. There you have it, those are get ups. You can do them home, anywhere, kickboxing, cross training. We're coming live all the time at you, twice a week, Tuesdays and Fridays. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, email me at Mike at Club Kale Gyms. I'll address them. Bye for now. <sighs> hey guys, Mike Andrula for Dynamic Intensity. We're here at beautiful Sea Kale Kickboxing in Hoboken, New Jersey. 10,000 square feet, 100 bags, what the? You know what I'm talking about. It's an absolutely amazing place. And we're gonna do something to keep you light on your feet. Main problem with beginners, they, they rest on their heels. And then as soon as something moves, they're out of commission. So if we were just gonna demonstrate on this bag, if I keep my heels flat on the ground, as soon as I lean forward, then I'm out of alignment. I'm not gonna be able to move at all. So take some time, but you wanna be light on your feet and step forward twist in. So a couple drills you can do at home, and it's also great for your warm-up, is high knees, butt kickers, and ski switches. High knees are fantastic. It's getting your heart rate up. It's also giving a little bit of stretch, dynamic stretching to your butt, your hamstrings, and your lower back. So it's about as simple as it sounds. You want to lean back and drive your knees up. You can hit with your hand for effect. You're bouncing off the balls of your feet, so you're getting lighter and lighter, conditioning your feet, kind of like jumping rope. Buck kickers, you're working the opposite. You're gonna stretch out the quad and hip flexors. So you're gonna lean forward. And I like to flick the foot at the top. Just getting loose, getting your heart rate up. Last one, ski switches. Ski switches, it's very important because you're putting the weight on the ball of the foot. And then you're gonna switch back and forth. Super simple, but extremely effective. If you do this for five minutes a day, you're gonna get your heart rate up. It's also gonna make your striking nice and light because you're gonna be on the balls of your feet but you're gonna be hunkered down. So your quads, your butt, your hamstring are connected to the floor. It's also just great stretching, getting knee up to your chest. Normally when you run, you're not hitting all those muscle groups. You're hitting a limited portion of the muscle. So high knees, butt kickers, ski switches will set you right. That's all for now. Please check out the enormous dynamic instructional library on YouTube. You search it out, email me at Mike at Club KO Gyms. We're bringing you more nonstop just for your benefit, because you're special. What's happening guys, Mike Andrula for Dynamic Intensity and we're here in the luxurious CKO kickboxing. You have so many bags, you got TKO bags, you got Adidas, you got Hydrocore bags, it's a bag bonanza. But I'm here to show you a conditioning drill you can do at home, at the gym, anywhere you'd like. And we're gonna combine mountain climbers with double mountain climbers. Most of you might not be familiar with the type of mountain climbers, but we do the dynamic intensity mountain climbers or Everest mountain climbers. If you need to, we have that video, search it and you'll find it. But basically the point of that video was to bring the foot up a little bit higher. When you're on the mountain, just bring your feet up like that, you're not gonna get very far. So we wanna bend the elbow, sink down into it. We wanna use every single fiber of your body pull your foot up high and then switch it up. When you switch, you brace your upper body. So the drill would be five Everest mountain climbers, each side. Keeping track is in my strong suit. And then we're gonna do double mountain climber. That's when you're gonna explode both feet in and sit down 
just like so. Both feet in, sit down, both feet plant it on the floor, and you really want to use the upper body. It's not lower body here, it's the entire body. Both feet out, explode. As you're doing that, you're flexing all your muscles. You're gonna drag the knees or explode the knees in, back out. Then back into your mountain climbers. Five mountain climbers, five double mountain climbers. You're gonna be set to hit the streets with that exercise. It'll get you warmed up, get your, bl your blood pumping, and it's gonna get you in the best condition of your life. Please keep checking back in. This is Mike Andrula for Dynamic Intensity. If you have any questions, concerns, you want to see me do something crazy, email me at Mike at Club, K Club KO Gyms. Seacrest out. Oh, what's happening? It's Mike Andrula for Dynamic Intensity. We're here at CKO Kickboxing. Wow, you hear that echo in this place? 10,000 square feet, 100 bags. I feel like uh, I'm the queen of England. We're gonna show you shadow boxing today. And shadow boxing is basically something you're gonna do to improve your balance, also to improve your techniques. A lot of people just go crazy. They don't even wanna shadow box. They, they just hit everything, they hit the bag, which is good. But the bag also holds you up. It, it, it doesn't give you the full feel because if you miss, then you're gonna be completely off balance. So what we're gonna do is Basic shadow boxing, hands are up, elbows are tucked in, and we just want to work not only the arms going out, your punches really don't have much to do about your arms. They are uh, extending out, but it really starts in the ball of your foot. And if you'll get the kickboxing technique DVD, you'll see those key secrets where it's not just the arm just extending out. You'll do this all day long. If you're trying to build up power, you'll never get power. If you're trying to get ripped, you're never going to get ripped because you're leaving all of this on the table. Every time we throw that punch, I want you to push off the ball of your foot. It's going to send a shock wave of energy up through your body. Your hip's going to snap, the shoulder's going to snap. And when you're shadow boxing, you're working those subtle movements. Stepping forward, back, little steps. Just loosen up the hips, the shoulders, a great warm up. It's even better to work the technique. If you feel like you're off balance, that's why you're doing shadow boxing. You want to sit down into it. Step forward on the jab, twisting, pushing off the back foot on a cross. If I had to give you a template because you don't know what to do, just do jab cross. Shake it out. It's important to shake out your muscles so you don't build up too much lactic acid. Jab cross jab. Loosen up. Jab cross jab cross. You can just continuously follow that pattern. I have plenty, plenty, plenty in the archives of videos here. Please go to Dynamic Instructional. You're going to see everything. You're going to learn everything under the sun. This, this website is better than google.com. Bold statement. Email me at Mike at Club KO Gyms or find me on Facebook. We'll see you on Twitter. What's happening, guys? Mike Andrula for Dynamic Intensity here at the uh, studio's CKO Kickboxing in Hoboken, New Jersey, the biggest kickboxing gym in the world. And I want to show you a little trick you can do, or you might be having a little problem with your roundhouse kicks when the bag is not completely straight. So the bag is straight, just like if you're hitting a straight leg, it's very easy. You're going to come in nice and even because you want to come across the muscle, you want to come across the bag. But what happens if the person has their leg out like this, or the bag is tilted out like this? In this case, you could jackknife your shin into the bag. So that's what we want to pick up, that little trick. So basically, we're going to step across. If you have not gotten a DVD, you're going to need to get it because you're not going to know what the hell you're doing. You're going to have a messed up roundhouse kick if you don't get that DVD. But you want to lift the hip up. And what we're going to do is actually come up and then back down. So snap it up, back down. So you're going to lift the hips up, step across, and then chop right back down. puts the bag a little bit straight. Let me show you that again. So hands are up, elbows are tucked in. We want to come in on an angle so it's flat instead of coming completely straight in. So you're gonna come up, then down a little bit. Hands are up, elbows are tucked in. Oh, hey, how's it going? And then chop the hips straight through. Up, in. See, you can't do it so well on a flat bag because then you'll hit a little bit too inside. It has to be on an angle or if you're hitting a 
somebody's leg on an angle. So you're stepping across, bringing the hips, chopping down. Or you could always just manhandle like that. So please email me at Mike at Club Kale Gyms. I have a wealth of knowledge and information I want to share with you. I want to improve your kickboxing, your cross training, your fitness. And check me out on Dynamic Intensity, on YouTube, on our website. Have a fantastic day. Oh, almost scared you there. It's Mike Andrula for Dynamic Intensity, and today we're talking about what type of bag should you get. And this is one of the most common questions I get. It depends on your situation, if you're putting it in your house or garage. I don't want you to pull down the roof, but I'm gonna show you a couple different kinds of bags. So this would be classified as a high bag, Muay Thai bag, a long bag. This is Tidal's boxing, and Tidal makes a boxing, and they, they make a, a classic. So the main issue with this bag, when you get it, it'll be incredibly hard. But bags are like a fine wine. They break in with time and uh, it'll be a little bit softer here and then a lot of the stuffing will fall down. So this is, this is stuffed with the shreddings from clothes, from clo clothing factories and that's probably a little history for you. Everlast was in the Bronx because of the Garmin district in New York. All the snippets off the clothing, they would take those and stuff the bags with them. Now it's been outsourced to India and Pakistan, but this is your title bag. This thing will last probably 10 years, no problems. I'd highly recommend it if you're a little more advanced. This is a TKO bag. These are actually custom filled for Club KO. They're a soft filled, and they'll, they have a, the same stuffing, but they have a layer of foam because you want to build your power. You don't want to bruise your shin or bruise your hand right off the bat. These two types of bags are fantastic at home bags. And that might sound ridiculous because you're thinking, Mike, I don't want to have a gigantic bag. I want one of those little bags I can get at Sports Authority. But it turns out you don't because what happens is most of the wear and tear actually comes from the friction of the swinging back and forth. That chain starts wearing on itself and then it'll snap. And then all of a sudden it hits your kid's sister in the head. Your grandma yells at you. You don't want to get involved with those problems. These bags, you can sit them on the ground. And we don't do it here because we have a rubber floor, but if you get like a little tire, put it at the bottom, it'll stay there forever. You can beat the hell out of it and have a fantastic time and do less damage than you'll ever do with a small little bag. Just a couple one-off bags that we have here. This is an Everlast bag that has been retrofitted with a cushion on the outside. Everlast will mix a lot of their boxing bags with the cut material, but with sand too. So occasionally you'll get a pocket of sand because these things are being shipped over and now the bag's sitting on its side for 12 months and now you have a big pocket of sand. So you have to be careful when you're buying these. These will be the cheapest bags, but if you get the wrong one, you're gonna regret, regret it big time. This is a Century one-off bag. It's a little bit extra big and I like these bags to swing. It depends on what you wanna do. If you're working movement and speed, you want a bag that swings around. You can move forward, back, left and right and start anticipating where the bag's gonna be, which is a lot more fun. But if you're just starting out, I would probably go with something you could tie down and that's not gonna move too much. Finally, we got our Hydrocore series here. Hydrocore makes a bag that comes empty. Now this is the main problem. When you ship a bag, the thing is like 150 to 200 pounds. You're shipping this thing through the, uh, the Pony Express, they're gonna charge you a little bit of money. So either you want to get a bag that's not filled or you want to get something like a hydrocore bag where it has water in the middle, foam outside. It'll last a long time. I do like these bags. The water's in there to shake it up so you're constantly predicting where it's going to go. It bounces randomly, but they move all over the place. So you're going to have to bolt it down to the ground. And they come in bigger sizes. I just want to educate you on the bags. I know we had a big, a lot of questions on gloves. If you haven't seen that special, you should check out the gloves. This is Mike Andrula for CKO Trainer, and we're here to give you all the information resources we have and improve the community. Have a fantastic day. Enjoy. Ah, that burns down in the belly of the muscle. Mike Andrula for Dynamic Instructional, Dynamic Intensity, and I'm here to show you a little bit of a out-of-the-box exercise and it's called squat thrust and jumper pull-ups. 
So don't try this at home, first off. You basically want to squat down in a controlled manner, shoulder width apart, drop your butt, drop your butt, drop your butt, lean forward, hands on the ground, kick the feet out. Down into a push-up. If you've watched the push-up special, you'll know where to position your arms. And if you haven't, you better go watch it. Down nice and low, slow. You're gonna explode the knees in, just like the uh, double mountain climber series. Explode up. Into a nice pull-up. Down, up. This is how you work out in about five minutes. One more for good measure. Push up, explode up. Oh yeah, that's the ghetto workout right there. Mike Andrula, please email me, Mike at Club KO Gyms. I'm here to bring you all of it, all of it. Whatever you wanna see, I'll do backflips, headstands. I'm here for you, really. Let me get back to pumping out these buys. Hey guys, Mike Andrula for Dynamic Intensity, and we're here in the lair in the, the Smithsonian of gyms, Club KO Kickboxing in Hoboken, New Jersey. 10,000 of weights too. 10,000 bags, 10,000 weights. Whew. You could basically find any machine from any era in this entire gym, and we have it all for you. We're bringing it to you in Indiana, Michigan, Australia. What do we have here? We have 20 pound weights, and this is part of our do not do or don't try at home series. If you're more advanced, then you can give it a shot. I just don't want you calling 1 100 lawyer on me. Basically, we're gonna grab the dumbbells. And the goal here is just to work the body. It's just like our last video, maybe two videos ago, where we did a squat thrust and a jumper into a pull up. We wanna work a whole bunch of muscle groups all at once. So we're gonna use the dumbbells. We're gonna do a deadlift, modified deadlift squat here. Drop your butt down. Good posture, shoulder blades pinched together. Place the dumbbells on the ground. Right at this point, you wanna brace yourself. I have the round dumbbells to make it a little bit more difficult. If you don't brace yourself, you're gonna have a very hefty dental bill. So you're gonna brace yourself, kick your feet out, right? One push up. If you have not seen the push up series, you must see it because the hand positioning is, is clutch. Then what I'm gonna do is brace myself on my left arm. I'm gonna drag that elbow back. One more push up. Drag the elbow back, flex your back, shoulder blades together. Nice. One more push up for good measure. Explode the feet back in. Just like the double mountain climber. Check that video out. You're gonna stand back up, hang clean the weights. That means you're gonna pull the weights up with such force, your elbows are gonna go up. You're gonna actually throw the weights into the air and then catch them. Shoulder press. Let's do that again. Complicated enough for you? So we're gonna squat down, deadlift squat modification. Just basically means I'm gonna do what I want. Drop the butt down, weights on the ground. Kick the feet out, double mount climber style. One push up. I'm gonna brace with the left, pull the right. One push up. Brace with the right, pull left. One push up. That makes three push ups for you mathematicians out there. Pull the knees in, hang, clean it up. Remember, we're gonna pull the weight up. Just rip it up. You don't have a lot of power from this point. So you have to pull it up with a lot of force. Explode underneath it. Show your fast motion. Push up, brace, push up. Do about 50 of these bad boys. You're gonna be in some good damn shape. There you have it. The most innovative, the wackiest, it's all here. It's all in a dynamic intensity library. Be a part, email me at Mike at Club KO Gyms and join our group, subscribe, give us a thumbs up. What the hell else you got to do anyway? Let me get back to work my forearms here. It's a good one.
Hey guys, it's Mike Andrew. I'm about to show you the real double rainbow. Something you can do for your shoulders. Hitting a couple other muscles, but basically we're gonna start with the weights in front here. Anytime you're doing weights, or you wanna be in the correct posture, good positioning. Pinch your shoulder blades together, contract your lower back and your butt's kind of out a little bit. Knees are a little bit bent. You have to get that, that's the most important thing you can do. What we're gonna do is explode up. We're gonna come down slowly, rotate the hands, stop. That's it. And I got a name drop here, Tom Venuto actually showed me these, I just named them. So we're gonna explode straight up, down. As you come down, we're gonna rotate the weights, stop for a second, nice. Back to double rainbow position, explode up, down nice and slow. One more, nice, down nice and slow. I show you this because your shoulder strength, your arm strength needs to increase because I want you to be able to kickbox and cross train with ease. So please check out the videos on dynamic instruction, dynamic intensity, and get the DVD, which has all the keys you're gonna need to know. Be seeing you soon. Email me, Mike at Club KO Gyms. Oh, what, do you guys want more? Okay, we'll throw a bonus in just because you're good. It's a different take on a bicep curl. Remember I was just explaining good posture? What we wanna do is pin the elbows back like your arms are, look like they're broken off. You're gonna grab that weight and what we're gonna do is pull the dumbbell in from the side. At this top, and which is very important on biceps, triceps, chest, back, and a lot of things, is the manipulation of your hand. The hand position is gonna twist and tense the bicep completely different. So you wanna pull it in from the side and then at the top, small twist, flex your bicep, down and stretch. So between that double rainbow and that bicep curl, you're gonna be ready for Guido Beach because they only work upper body anyway. Who the hell cares? Got sequence pants on. So please email me, Mike at Club KO Gyms. We'll hit any body part you're having trouble, you need help, you need assistance, I'm here for you. That's it, I'm here for you. We'll see you soon. What's happening guys, Mike Andrula for Dynamic Intensity. I wanna to talk to you about sit-ups, abs, posture, and things are just getting out of whack. People are buying the ab rockets, they're doing hundreds of sit-ups a day, they're doing all these crunches, but they're just forgetting the main problem, not just to have ripped abs, your posture has to be correct, otherwise your hip, hips are gonna be tilted and you're gonna look fat anyway. So what you wanna do is correct your posture. So what we wanna do is tilt the hips back, we're gonna start working just as much lower body, anything in its excesses is never good. So we wanna tilt the hips back, we'll do a moderate amount of ab exercises, but we want to do some things to strengthen the lower back, strengthen the glutes and the hamstrings, which are gonna straighten your back out, pinch your shoulder blades together. What we're gonna do is the vacuum pose. And posing is important because it brings and connects your brain, mind to muscle connection much more deeper. So for the vacuum pose, all you're gonna do is take your arms, cross them back behind your head. You wanna push your lats out and you wanna squeeze the very bottom abs into the back of your spine. That's what you're envisioning. You squeeze the bottom abs into the back of your spine. This is gonna tilt your hips forward. It's gonna stretch the hip flexors. And it's gonna make your posture a lot better. It's also gonna make you look a little bit more slender. Let's see how we're pulling across. Getting the hips out. Squeezing the lower back, squeezing your butt. You wanna do this for about five, 10 minutes a day. Just squeeze the abs into the back of the spine. This is gonna straighten you out, lengthen you, Call you soon, soon, you know, you're gonna be mistaken for Gabrielle Reese or something like that. Not a good example, but this is Mike from Club KO Gyms. I'm here. If you have any questions, pop them areas, we'll attack them. I'll attack them like a, it's a street fight, just for you. So I'm your buddy. See you soon. What's happening, guys? Mike Andrula from Dynamic Intensity, and we're in the test kitchen of it all, CKO Kickboxing in Hoboken, New Jersey. And I'm here to show you donkey squats, the most manly, coolest looking exercises I could ever think of. It's basically, if you have bad knees, bad back, don't try it. Put your hands on the ground, support yourself a little bit. You're gonna straighten your legs out, drop your butt down. Straighten the legs out, 
drop the butt down. And this is mainly gonna hit your butt, your hamstrings, a little bit of calves. As soon as your lower body starts to get fatigued, you wanna push off with your arms as well. You're gonna go at a pretty fast pace. It's gonna burn deeply because you can't shake out your muscles, so the lactic acid's gonna sit in there. So you wanna do about 10 of them. You're gonna stand up, shake it out for a second, back down, 10 more reps. And I'll tell you what, you're gonna have buns of titanium. You're gonna be able to bounce a uh, half a dollar off that bun. Please email me, Mike at Club KO Gyms. I have a wealth of knowledge, information. We're here to help you. That's it, I'm here to help you. I'm like uh, Mother Teresa of kickboxing. That's all for now, we'll see you soon. Don't forget to subscribe. Oh, hey guys, Mike Andrula, Dynamic Intensity, CKOTrainer.com. And today we're gonna to be doing a five, five, five workout. It's a mini workout you should be incorporating throughout your week, and it's a little bit higher intensity, so you can certainly customize it and take the squat thrust and the jumpers out. If you haven't watched our prior videos on push-ups, squats, and squat thrusts and jumpers, better go back and do that so you know the proper technique. But just for time's sake, I'm gonna go directly into the workout. Couple key points. Anytime you're doing these movements, you wanna keep your shoulder blades pinched together. Your butt out and your lower back contracted. It's kinda like this. When we're hitting this up, I want you to keep the intensity up, but I don't want you to pass out. So when you're doing squat thrusts and jumpers, all the blood is being rushed into the major muscles. So you really wanna Take your time in between. So all we wanna do is five, five, five. We're gonna do five squat thrusts and jumpers. We're gonna drop down. I like to place the hands in between the feet. Kick your feet out. Now, remember, if you haven't watched the push-up tutorial, you better do it, because you wanna keep your hands down low. One push-up. Two. Three, and it's important to stay extremely relaxed. Any tension in your muscles will just get you exhausted. Five full squats. Remember, butt back, keep your lower back contracted, your shoulder blades together, and I like to even squeeze every single muscle group at the top. Pose at the top, if you will. Good, one more. That probably was six. Push-ups. Five, four, three, two, one. Start it back over, squat thrust and a jump. Staying loose, staying relaxed. Squats. One, two, three, four, five. Push ups. One, two, three, four, five. There you have it. You want to be able to do as many sets as you can within a two minute time frame. Don't push it too hard on the first one, and you want to use these, incorporate them throughout the week. These small mini workouts you can do anywhere. If you're in a restaurant, do them in a bathroom stall. If you're at your buddy's house, do them in his living room, whatever you want. Please email me, Mike, at clubkogyms.com or visit us on cktrainer.com. We got a boatload of information, resources. We want to bring you to your ultimate body. Check us out. Hey guys, Mike Andrula for Dynamic Intensity, and we're here in the beautiful, luxurious, posh CKO kickboxing. And I'm here to show you something that you can do at home, anywhere, you can do it on the road, you can do it in a kickboxing gym. It's gonna combine forearms and toes, which most people might refer to as plank, and push-up position. And you don't need to do the full push-up. We're gonna start in a plank. So basically what you wanna do on plank, a lot of people focus on the length of time that they hold it. We don't want to focus on that. We want to focus on flexing the muscles, keeping them tight, and staying in proper form. If you get tired, take a break. That's, that's my advice to you. So you're going to drop it down. We're going to put the forearms and the toes on the ground. From this position, the rule of thumb is to keep your shoulders, your hips, and the knees in the same line. Back is tight, abs are tight. Chest, breathe, quads, butt, hamstring. What you're gonna do is hold this five, four, three, two, push-up position. For the push-up, again, refer back to our push-up video. You wanna slide the hand down to your side. Slide it down to your side, push-up position. Five, four, three, two, forms and toes. Back straight, abs tight. Use this all the time in class. 
It's a kick-ass exercise. You can increase the speed to make it more difficult. I really want you to explode into position. Snap your hips, explode your body, but don't let your hips go up high. Tell me what, I'm having a great time over here. Working it for you, I'm doing everything I can to get you in the best shape of your entire life. I'm gonna lay down and rest. You guys are my buddies. That's why I do this. I love you. I just wanna bring you the most information, the most resources you could possibly have. Please like the video, subscribe to the video. My name is Mike Andrula. Email me at clubkogyms.com. I will be seeing you soon. Remember, forearms and toes, push up. Push up, forearms and toes. Push up, push up. So I faked you out on that one. Guys, Mike Andrula here. Dynamic intensity, come on, come on in. I wanna show you something you can do quick at home to get that good Guido pump, that Jersey Shore beep pump that uh, is hitting the nation. You wanna take a straight bar. If you're not as strong, then you wanna just get a, a small bar. You can probably use even a broomstick if you've been practicing your posing or your technique. Please refer to the other videos. We wanna work the biceps and the triceps at the same time. And we're gonna do a obviously a straight bar curl, which is not anything revolutionary at all. But the key is when you do your bicep curl, and this is most people will come here and then take the tension off the bicep by moving the elbow up. So the shoulder actually takes a lot of the, the punishment there. So you basically want to bring it right about here. And if you drop and tilt the, hips a, the wrist a little bit, you're going to feel like you're getting a better peak at the top. When you bring it here, you're going to take the tension off. So we're going to get a nice concentrated uh, straight bar curl here. Show you with some weights. It's good posture first off, anytime you, you grab this lift. I like these little feety shoes I got here. They're insulated for, for the winter because I can really feel the ground. I'm connected to the floor. My hips are straight, my shoulder blades are pinched together, my abs are tight, butts out, right? I'm gonna lift up, lift up, lift up, lift up. Slight twist down on the wrist, and you're gonna flex that bicep. Nice and straight. I even like to squeeze the tricep at the bottom. Bicep, tricep. What you don't wanna do is this because now you're taking the tension completely off the bicep and we'll want to put a lot of tension demand right into the bicep. So what you're gonna do is 10 reps here. It's the key. And I'm not keeping track, I, I'm not a rocket scientist. I'm gonna go into a, a tricep exercise and it's a very limited motion, but you probably haven't seen this one before. We're gonna go with a reverse hand grip. If you have a small bar, that's fine. Probably better off. Hips are a little bit forward, elbows are bent. Flex, elbows are bent, flex, that's it. Keeping that elbow stationary, nice, see that? It's not a big move, it's a little move. But let me tell you, your triceps are gonna be on fire. Two more, nice, put it back, start it back over again, bicep curl. Grab that thing, 10 reps. Not coming up too high. Wrist tilted down a little bit. Squeezing at the top. Keeping track of your reps. One, two, drop it on down. The kickback. Remember, triceps don't have to move that much to contract. Just flexing out, a little bit of bend. Flex, a little bit of bend. Grab that sucker, lean forward. I'm turning my neck to explain things, but as a good rule of thumb, don't turn your neck when, you're, when your body's under tension because that's when you really get that strained neck. It cursed me out for days. Nice. Get two more. Ah, Nice. One more. That's it. I'm ready to go get a cup of Ron Ron juice and uh, hit the beach. Guys, it's been fantastic. It's been wonderful. It's been everything. It really has been special. Please, like the video. Subscribe to the video. This is Mike. Email me at Mike at Club KO Gyms. I'm here for you. I'll do anything for you. You're my buddy. See you soon.
What's happening guys, Mike Androli here, and I'm here to show you a straight bar workout that is exclusive. We use this for all the really busy people when you need to get a quick workout in. And you're just gonna grab a basic straight bar. It could weigh uh, 30 pounds, 40 pounds, 100 pounds, depends on what you wanna do. And we're gonna start with bent over rows. And anytime you're doing your bent over rows, and I've mentioned this in past videos, we gotta keep the butt out, lower back contracted, weights on the balls of your feet, pinch your shoulder blades together so you're not rounding your back out. Then we're gonna tilt forward from the hips, butt out all the way, let that bar hang, and just gonna drive the elbows back. Now I'm not gonna do all the reps because I want you guys to get your time for workout, but you're gonna do about 20 to actual 40 reps here. Almost a failure, so you can't possibly do anymore. I'm turning my neck, but don't turn your neck under tension here. So you're gonna pump out all the bent over rows possible, as many as you can. Immediately from there, we're gonna bring the hands close together. Use your thumbs to measure. We're gonna do upright rows. If you have any shoulder problems, this might not be the best one for you. Just limit the motion to right underneath your chest, but I'm gonna pull it all the way up to the chin. When I pop it up, my butt goes out a little bit and the elbows go higher than my shoulder blades. Again, 20 to 40 reps. You wanna get a pretty good burn. Directly from there, we're gonna pop it into a shoulder press, wide grip. And on a shoulder press, it's really not necessary, it's kind of dangerous to lock the elbows out completely because that's when you get off balance. So keep the bar in front of you, straight reps up and down. Pumping them out. Right from there, we're gonna pop it into a bicep curl. Now listen, we're trying to work out in five minutes. We're going non-stop, there's no rest. Bent over rows, upright rows, shoulder press, bicep curl. As many as you can right here. We're gonna kick it back, ooh, sorry about that. We're gonna kick it back to a tricep extension. Now this one is highly unusual and it doesn't take a long motion. It's just a bend of the elbow, flex of the triceps. That's it. You're gonna be incredibly amazed how bad that burns right there. Great job, and then we're gonna start this cycle right on over. Bent over rows, butt out, shoulder blades pinched together. Lower back contracted. Arms right here underneath your chest. We're just gonna pull it in. Nice and quick. So say we did 40, hands together, upright rows. That's it, explode them up. Shoulder press, as many as you can. Bicep curl, that's it. Kick it back, tricep extension. Behind the back. There you have it, and that's some Jersey Shore shortcut workouts for you. If you gotta hit the beach in five minutes, please check us out on cktrainer.com. We have tons of information. I'm sure we have over two, 3,000 videos, maybe like 36 videos, but each one contains a little gem that can transform you, can give you the Ron Ron arms, can give you the J-Wow chest. You know what I'm saying? Mike Androla, email me, Mike at Club KO Gyms. Let's make this happen. What's happening guys, Mike Andrew, I knew you'd find me. You found me again. And today we got something for you. It's called a goblet squat. And uh, a man named, I'm gonna name drop here, Tom Venuto showed me when I was working out with him. I'm not too scared of him seeing this because he reads those like those things with like the pages and the words. They like hide them in the libraries or something like that. So I'm not worried about him seeing this on YouTube, but we're gonna do a goblet squat. So basically, instead of putting the weight behind the neck, which is kind of a little bit dangerous if you're doing heavy weight. We're gonna keep the weight in the front on the squat. We're gonna use the hands like you're holding a goblet, right? We're gonna drop the butt back. Start out with a moderate weight. You kinda, I, I'm gonna, just for demonstration purposes, I'm not gonna keep it all the way on my chest, but you wanna keep that weight on your chest. Shoulder blades pinched together, lower back contracted, butt out, drop your butt down, squeeze the hips forward. So right here, we're gonna work with a 55 goblet squat style. Ready? Butt down. I like to go all the way down. I don't read Prevention Magazine. We're gonna stand it up, bam, squeeze your hips forward. That's it. It just holds the weight a whole lot better. Less strain, other muscle groups are really getting hit now. My forearms, my biceps, triceps, shoulders. I mean, you'll get absolutely shredded just doing these every single day. 
We're looking to do about 10 to 20. Hips forward, hips forward. I'll show you a couple from the side. Really grab that, that dumbbell, shoulder blades pinched together, butt out, lower back contracted. Let's hit it. Bam. See it again? Bam. Watch out. One more time. Bam. And there you have it, guys. Goblet squats. It's amazing. It's dynamic. It's dynamic intensity. I'm Mike Andrula. Email me, mike at clubkogyms.com. Go to CKO Trainer. Subscribe. Like us. What the hell? You're not doing anything, already. Just hit that thing. Let's get this party started. Be seeing you soon. Got to grow for me. Got to grow. Oh, hey guys. Oh, I heard this. I was reading some article about kissing your biceps, give them love to grow or something. Uh, anyway, Mike Andrew here for Dynamic Intensity, cktrainer.com, and we're going to show you something extremely valuable. We came out with the workout DVD. It should be hitting the shelves very soon. And a lot of people are worried about not having a heavy bag. If you don't have a heavy bag, all you need is a little resistance. You don't even need these, but it does help. When you're using your dumbbells and you're shadow boxing or you want to build some uh, striking power, you want to keep your elbows tucked down and you don't want to hyperextend the elbow like my uh, friend Billy Blanks does. You want to keep those elbows a little bit bent and flex your muscles so there's no hyperextension and you don't get tennis elbow. So we're going to start with a straight jab cross and you'll be amazed, amazed what I'm going to do with these two little bad boys right here, these so-called girly man weights. We got the hands up, elbows tucked in. We're gonna start with a light jab cross, right? So I'm down, I'm right footed. I'm gonna put my left foot forward. And what I'm gonna do is start transferring weight back and forth, letting the arm pop out. We don't wanna get thrown off balance, so I'm shifting weight back and forth, pedaling my feet just a little bit. Now I know you gotta, you gotta work out fast and hard, so what we're gonna do is go up and down the bag. And we use this class, I mean this drill in our heavy bag workout class where you're going up and down. So what I'm doing is I'm hitting my butt, my hamstrings, my quads. At the same time, I'm working the entire upper body, throwing the punches, getting your cardio up, and we're going nonstop. That's it, straight punches from the chin back to the chin. After you do it for 30 seconds, we're switching up sides. That's right, switch it up, topsy-turvy style. Right foot forward, left foot back. Now my right's my jab, same principles apply. I'm transferring weight back and forth. I'm not hyperextending the elbows and I'm going up and down. That's it. Nice. This way, every time I throw my punch, my butt, my hamstrings, and my quads, calves, every muscle in my body is fully being used. Every muscle fiber I currently own is going into my punch, and that's the key. If you're just throwing punches like this, you're gonna be there till 2040 trying to get results. You wanna use every single muscle in your body. So when we're doing the shadow boxing with the jab crosses and the weights, try going up and down a couple times. Work your butt, work your hamstrings. And there you have it. That's shadow boxing with some dumbbells. Go out there, get yourself the full workout because this is just a little tidbit. This is just a little taste of what we're gonna do where you're gonna transform your body. Please email me, Mike at Club KO Gyms. Go to cktrainer.com. Talk to me, I don't have anything else to do. I'll talk to you all day long. You sit in your basement, email me. I'll just sit in my basement, email you back. Let's make it happen. Hey guys, Mike Andrew here, and we're gonna be doing torso twist. I don't wanna surprise you, it's Mike Andrew from Dynamic Intensity and cktrainer.com. Gotta put the shameless plugs in there. However, today we're gonna be doing torso twist. And when I first implemented this into my classes, I realized hooks, elbows, and roundhouse kicks became perfect. Perfection was achieved by using a torso twist as part of the warm up. Although it has other benefits, you can use this torso twist to tighten your obliques, your abs, your chest, your shoulders, your triceps, work in your lower body. And basically what it's doing is exaggerating the hook motion. We're gonna twist the hips, explode the hips forward. We have some weights for resistance. If you can handle heavier weights, please get heavier weights. Actually, let's grab some heavier weights. 20 pounds. What's up now? 
got the big boys. I'm just kidding. 20 pounds, whatever. This is gonna be certainly heavy. And what we're gonna do is pivot. And what I'm doing is contracting the abs, the obliques, the lower back, every time I snap forward. That's it, holding it up nice and high. Your shoulders, your biceps, your triceps, chest, back, butt, hamstrings, calves, every single muscle in your body has to work together here. That's why we call it dynamic intensity. We don't call it isolation intensity. Every single muscle here is at work. Snapping the hips back and forth. Let's go back to the five pounds. Got those. Now we're gonna perform that torso twist with a little more precision when we have lighter weights. What we wanna do is explode the hips forward and if you can catch that, I'll do it in a slow motion for you. Boom, we don't have high tech. That's it. See how the hips went slightly in front of the hands? And you'll notice when you're throwing power hooks, that's what you wanna do. You wanna bring the hips around right before the hand. That gets more weight and more power. And you're gonna use this for hooks. You're gonna use this for elbows. You're gonna use it for roundhouse kicks. This pop of the hip. Besides that, it's also getting my shoulders, triceps, biceps, chest, abs. I can feel the pump already. Every time I throw it, then I also have to use the opposite muscles to pull it back. And flexing all the way through. That's it. And there you have it. That's torso twist and you want to use this responsibly. Don't go showing it to all your friends that don't know what they're doing. You want to pop those hips around. And please, use this for our heavy bag workout. It's absolutely amazing, outstanding. We've been doing this for over 14 years. We have 100 plus people in class. It's a phenomenal, phenomenal workout. Email me, Mike, at Club Kale Gyms, or check us out on cklotrainer.com because we got all types of things that'll transform your body or get you to the next level. This is Mike Andrula. Peace out. Hey guys, just practicing my uh, breakdancing stance here. And we're gonna do something similar to an Everest mountain climber. If you haven't seen it, make sure you watch that first. This is simple, you can do it anywhere. It's for your abs, it's for your core. More importantly, it's easy, it's fun, and you'll love it. So we wanna get into a push-up position. You feel strong, your chest is out, you're flexing your muscles. The key now is we wanna drive the right knee into the chest as you do it. You want to feel every single muscle fiber in your abs, your obliques. Keep your chest, your biceps tight, squeeze, and back out. You don't have to do anything fancy. Just pull those knees in, flex nice and tight, back out in a controlled manner. You want to do about 30 to 200, however many you can do. Then you want to start working some variations in. Pulling the knee to the outside. Back out, control it. Pull the knee to the outside. Squeeze, back out, control it. Finally, rocking the knee across your body. Flex, whoa, twisting, flex. So you have forward, you have sides, you have a cross. Listen guys, I got my workout in. Did you get your workout in? Keep tuning in, subscribe, email me, Mike at Club KO Gyms. I'm demanding it. I have fantastic resources, we're a nonstop, we have a ton of energy. We have entertainment out the wazoo.